All right, here is the nerd, the nerd's view of the inside of a pellet stove. Um, it worked at the guy's house that I bought it from. When I got it home, it didn't work. It turns out the fuse holder um, broke in half. This one's a much uh, heavier duty NTE brand uh, fuse holder. It holds a 5x20 fuse, and that's what uh, powered up the heater. So now it's working. You can hear it running a little bit. You got the exhaust pipe. I'm set up here in the garage. Um, there's the pipe, just for testing. Here's our uh, our hopper. It's got some pellets in it, not a lot. Let's see. Can you see that? 156 degrees. That's pretty hot. Ooh, baby. And the flames look like that. So, let's see, it's set. You see that? Almost full blower and completely full heat. I think heat means um, the rate of uh, pellets dropping. I'm not absolutely 100% sure, but I think that's what it means. And blower means blower. There's two blowers in here, an exhaust and one for that, the, the, the pot. Here's what we got monitoring it. Um, guy gave me an old beat up thermostat. That's okay, it's a good on off switch for now. And uh, oh geez, it's the hottest I've seen it yet. 167, 168, yeah, it's getting pretty warm. And uh, the heat com it comes out of right here and it's, it's blazing, it's doing real good. Uh, it's w windy as heck and trying to rain so I wanted to test this before I brought it in the house. I ran it all the way down. I turned off the thermostat, which is the levers right there. I turned it down and it um, it shut the whole thing off. That was pretty neat. And I turned it back on, went and grabbed my camera, and now we have all kinds of heat. Now, for a comparison, um, my propane furnace would put out 60 degrees above ambient. So if it was 60 degrees in the house, then it put out 120. If it was 70, that would be 130. And this is way past any of that. So we'll see. I got it because my neighbor, 89 years old, great guy, um, they kept their house 80 degrees all the time. And uh, used 125 125 dollars? 125 pounds. Shoot, now I gotta call him and ask him. So it was pretty inexpensive, but mostly it was effective. I'm tired of freezing to death in my house during the winter. I'm just sick of it. So here we go. Okay, so the temperature's coming down a little bit. You can see the flames aren't quite as huge as when we started. That's, you know, probably within the uh, envelope for um, temperature regulation. So I don't know anything about these pellets, if they're worth a dang. They came out of an already open bag. They may have a bag. They may have a lot of moisture in them. I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, let's take a look at the instructions that I rarely ever view. Let's see. Advantage Optima and Profile Series. Traditions, T300P. Um, he said this was a, um, he said it was a something 30. I forget the brand name. Um, but anyway, it, it seems to be working really good. Yeah, the temperature, wow, look at that. <coughs> what? So the flame's gone down. The temperature was a 190 there or something, 196 there for a second. It's plenty toasty. Now, Right now, I can tell the uh, the airflow's gone way down. The uh... wow, what the heck? Let's see, what do we got to set on? Uh oh, we have a fault. It's flickering. Uh, probably got too hot. Well, I don't know. I don't know anything about it. He said it worked. Um. Well, okay, well that's why I'm out here testing it in the garage, not in the house. All 
right, let's see if we can. All right, let's turn the heat down. Okay, so, uh, geez. Don't know if that means I, it got pretty awful hot. Maybe there is a, a maximum temperature level and uh, shucks, man. See? Oh yeah, you can see a perfect reflection on me. Well, anyway, that's what we have. Um, not much else I can show you. Uh, here's the symbol on the front. Um, it's from 2002. You can probably hear the air coming out. Okay, now the air um, flow has picked back up. So, I don't know, man. I'm not sure... You know, this is my first time operating it. Um, it's the first cycle it's failed on, so we'll have to we'll have to look into this. I mean, 100, 120, 130 is plenty hot. You can hear it uh, dropping pellets, and you can just barely see them creeping. So I don't know what the failure was, and I don't know if it can tell me what the failure was. Um, this is the auger and its AC motor for delivering pellets. Um, there's a huge exhaust blower. This is the, fl the mounting flange for it, but it's, it's huge in diameter. I know it's like 8 inches in diameter. You can see some of the orange on it there. That's for exhaust. Yeah, this is just barely warm, the outside of this uh, dual layer of exhaust pipe. Um, so I can't tell you for sure what the problem is. Now, it's pulling 500 watts, so that means the, uh, the heater element, see those two light colored wires and they go right there, that's the heater. Um, must have gotten slow here, it must have shut off long enough it, it had to restart it. So I don't know where the failure is or what the failure is. I do not know the answer. Uh, this is supposed to be the air intake here, but there's something a little flawed that I don't understand. See those holes in the side of the air intake? So supposedly it'll pull air from inside the house if you don't uh, have good air, an air source, maybe it's plugged or something. So, uh, let's see how we're burning here. It's doing all right. Let's see, and we have it set for, yeah, you know, whatever, two thirds. Probably it's blinking to you guys, but all those LEDs are on steadily. Uh, huh. It's timed out. I'm not a big fan of Craftsman meters. Oh, are you going to tell me that the battery died? Yeah, the switches, these rotary switches, are super cheap. And they fail all the time. So, the one thing I do like about it is it came with a thermocouple. I suppose I could hook that to any of my Fluke meters, even though they don't have a a temperature setting on them. It's something like, uh, I don't know, I forget what it is. It's calibrated so many degrees per millivolt, maybe 10, 10 degrees per millivolt or 10 millivolts per degree, something like that. But I use it on this because it works good. Yeah, I'm going to let that stay off. Okay, so we are at 130. I mean, if this was in the house, and the house was 65 inside because it's a lot cooler out here. Um, 130 on top of 65 would be really, really warm. Um, th you know what? There was something I found. I can't, let's see, I don't think I can show it to you. Um, yeah, it's coming out warm. Sorry for the wind. Okay, so 
What did I find in here? Um, where is it? Attached. There's a, it's a pressure switch in here, and it's round. I, it's, you can't see it unless you open the sides. Um, and the pressure switch was bypassed. Somebody pulled the connectors off and then attached them to each other so that if there was uh, back pressure inside the exhaust, like a plug or something, then it would shut off the feed of the pellets, which eventually will shut the whole thing down. So um, I checked it with a meter and uh, normally closed, it was fine. You blow in it very gently, it open circuits and you let go and it closed circuits again. So I, I don't know. Um, maybe that's why he bypassed it, because there's, there's some kind of a flaw here. I don't know what the flaw is. Um, this blower is working good. You can see it spinning. Um, so I don't know. That's the only thing I found, and uh, you know maybe that's the flaw. Maybe that's what's wrong. Um, there shouldn't be a lot of back pressure because this thing is straight and short. Uh, it's two feet and three feet, so five plus almost yeah, you know, almost six feet long. Um, so anyway, that's the only thing I found that I didn't like that I put back together. Um, Let's see. Oh, the heater's still on. The, let's see. Here's how I know that. Oh. 500 watts. It usually runs between 100 and 200 watts, depending on the. Um, like right now, the heater's running because there's there's literally no. Uh, sorry for the reflection. There's no uh, fire, and so the heater's trying to run and, and get this thing going. When the fire is working good, the heater shuts off, and depending on where the blowers are set, this will go down to 100 to 200 watts. So right now, the heater's on, and it's got to be because there's no pellets in there. And temperature's way down, 110. Did we lose it? Did we get a... No? It's not blinking. See that LED at the top, the green one? Yeah, it's not blinking. Um, all right, let's do this. Full heat. Full blower. Let's see what happens. Yeah, the temperature's way down. Which is still, you know, if you're heating your house, that's still pretty hot. I noticed our furnace, let's see, our, our old propane furnace would do 120 degrees. I'm starting to forget. I put this um, T-type thermocouple in the vent and I think it would put out 120 degree air. So it was 60 from the furnace and 60 in the house. So um, It's trying to load some more. And the temperature's getting really low. That's Fahrenheit. If I, if you didn't miss the, if you missed the dial indication. Um, well, you know, it's a troubleshooting match here. I got the cover off the back, obviously, and uh, of course I'm running this pellet stove next to all my fuel containers. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry, the glare, I don't even know what I could possibly do about the glare. Hmm, I have to close the door, and yeah, that's not going to work. Anyway, so it looks like it's trying to fill up again, and we'll see. I, I'm just going to have to run this through a bunch of cycles. There we go. Oh, isn't that pretty? So, uh... You see the pellets are piling up in there? When they blow air through the bottom of it, it's like when you blow on a campfire trying to get it going. This thing turns it into a raging torch. Temperature's still not up yet, but the fire's obviously starting again. Heater's still on.
but as soon as it starts raging pretty good, the heater will shut off. Because 500 watts is a lot of electricity. You don't want that running a lot in that, in that method, in that mode. So, make sure that the uh, thermometers, the thermostats turn way up just to... There's a lot of heat coming out of this thing right now. And it's only a hundred and something up. It's starting to creep pretty bad. Yeah, it's starting. Look at that. Look how pretty. Helps with the glare, too. <laughs> Look at that. Isn't that something? Wow. There's some tubes at the top of this thing. You can see them there at the tip of the flames. And it's heating these tubes, and that's what the air blows out of. Yeah, that's something. I like it. Uh, just got to find out what the problem is. Yeah, it's still burning 500 watts, so it must not be hot enough. I think they have those... Um, those thermal discs, and I think it has to be a certain minimum temperature for it to stop pulling 500 watts. Temperature's coming up good. Yeah, it's climbing quick, and I can feel the heat coming out of this thing. Oh, geez, that's getting warm. Fortunately, I'm out here in the garage, so I got air blowing all around me. And oh, look at that. I haven't had a fire in a house for, well, since lightning struck the house. <laughs> yeah, that's not funny. But uh, anyway, it uh, once all those pellets start glowing and getting and getting on, catching on fire, it'll really, God, it's still 500 watts. All right, well, I don't know what to do. Um, I'm probably boring you guys to death, so I'm gonna stop. Well, I'm going to stop for now. This is a lot of fun if you're a nerd. <clears throat> so I should have put a nerd alert at the beginning of this. Anyway, um, it seems to be working good. There's not much smell here in the garage. Um, oh, there it goes. There we go. I heard something change. Um, one thing I don't like, I don't know if you can really tell, but this cord is real small diameter. And it's it's the same kind of plug-in like on the back of a desktop computer. So I think I have a heavier gauge. I'm gonna put that in. It pulls you know a little over 500 watts, four point something amps, and I think I'm gonna make that um, I'm gonna make a put a bigger one on. I just just it's scrawny. I don't know what that's from, a modem? I mean I don't know. Uh, modems don't use 120 volt cords usually. It's pretty. Now, I know nothing of these pellets, so if you guys see something that you don't like, like all the sparks and stuff flying around, let me know. Um, this bag's been open probably a long, long time. Probably got contaminated with lots of moisture. Does that matter? I have no idea. I don't even know if it's soft or hardwood. I have to... I looked over the bag carefully, and I really couldn't find anything um, that told me, which I thought was kind of odd. Okay, so we know the heater's off. The great thing is there's a tr tray under here. I'm not sure how to grab it, I guess, by that little thing sticking out. And then the um, the tray will uh, pull out and, and all the ashes will be in it. It's a lot easier to clean. So, well, that thing's, that thing's humming. So you have to decide how you want to do it. It's not fully automatic. Um, okay, so let's do this. Let's bring the heat down. Brought the heat down. Uh, I'm gonna leave the blower where it is because I don't know what I'm doing. Wow, that thing's really cranking. It seems to spend most of its time in the 140s, but earlier it was hitting uh, 190 or something. There, okay, so you see they're both about two-thirds. Okay, 
Alright, so let's see. 150. Isn't that beautiful? If you hadn't had a fire in your house in a long time other than a lightning strike, <laughs> this is really something. Well, it's functional. It shut off on us once and showed a fault. So I'll have to I'll have to look that up. Maybe you gotta run it at a lower feed rate and a lower floor setting so it doesn't get so hot. As you can tell it's coming down. The flame height and everything's coming down. Temperature still you know it's up there. 150 something degrees in a house that's say 60 that's that's like just under 220 degrees total. That's that's a lot of heat. So this thing's rated, I think, up to 2,000 square feet, and our house is 14 and 1450. So okay, now it is slowing down. The temperature isn't slowing down yet. All right, I could do this all night because this is really fun for me. But you you people have to watch these stupid videos, or not. All right, talk to you later. See you bye.